the Messianic Torah Keeper of the Yeshua HaMashiach YouTube channel. And today I want to read to you Isaiah chapter 9 verses 9 through 18. This is part of the seventh prophecy. You need two hands for that. Seventh prophecy in the series of seven prophecies against the wickedness in the state of Washington and um, other areas. It's definitely in Washington state. Um, there's a lot of wickedness that's gone on here, and we we'll might talk about that at the end of the video, but first we're going to read from here. So we start in verses 9. Where's verse 9? And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and the stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will rebuild. The hewn stones, the sycamores are cut down, but we will Change them into cedars. Therefore, Yahweh shall set up the adversaries of Ryzen and join his enemies together. The Syrians, that's important, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek Yahweh of hosts. Therefore Yahweh will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. In the ancient, uh, that could be Rush, I think it's Rush. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, the one that society says is the ancient and honorable. He is dead, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Okay? For the leaders of this people cause them to error, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Um, we also see this in, I think, Second Peter uh, ch chapter 3, um, where it's talking about uh, misinterpreting Paul's writings, and those who misinterpret Paul's writings um, are destroyed. Those who found themselves on a misinterpretation of lostness are destroyed. Um, that's what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3. Um, and then we go to verse 17. Though for Yahweh shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite, an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. And also, when wicked people raise wicked children to be wicked, and encourage and, and repeat these bad habits, then that's one of the reasons why it has to be it has to be destroyed. When you think about Sodom and Gomorrah, for example, you say, well, there were lots of victims in Sodom and Gomorrah. They cried out. It says so in the Bible. They cried out to Yahweh for help and he destroyed them. Why did Yahweh destroy the victims along with the the ones that were victimizing them? And I believe that the reason is is because it's uh, there's evil habits and it's, it's just such wickedness it would just continue and perpetuate. It had to be wiped out just like the flood of Noah or Noe. Um, it had to be wiped out and start it over, okay? So what wickedness is there today? Well, I want you to think of the two great commandments in Scripture that most people can agree on. Even President Obama agrees on the two commandments in the Scriptures. And the first one is to love the Lord thy God, or love the Lord thy Elohim, um, love Yahweh thy Elohim, with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it. It's to do unto others as you have them do to you, or treat others the way you want to be treated. To treat people well. And we see throughout the Bible and the examples whether it's the story of Ruth or the story of Abraham or others, because uh, Abraham and Sarah were married and apparently Sarah uh, through different, because she is called by different names, um, apparently she was uh, one of Abraham's distant relatives whose father had died and, and was being redeemed at least that's the way people have um, interpreted that have studied it. And so we see this where Ruth and Boaz Boaz is reaching down uh, to lift up Ruth and Naomi and restore them back again. And this is one of the problems that it happens today, is that 
whether it's bad things that are happening to people as a result of crime and injustice and wickedness, or it's just they're in old age, like my grandmother, or uh, they're in some sort of unfortunate situation. Maybe they're even just a really sinful person, and they want to come into the church and they want prayer. That could be a big deal right there. They just want prayer. They want to get right with Yahweh. And we see this even in uh, the old covenants of the Bible. We see that uh, when they're rebuilding the temple, the foreigners wanted to come. And also in the new covenant, the foreigners wanted to come in. And they wanted to get right with Yahweh. And the, the Jewish people, the Israelites, they said no. They, they, would, they, were just, they were, didn't want any foreigners coming in, even though those foreigners were sincere at wanting to know Yahweh, wanting to know the truth. And so what happens, like I said, there's several different, but the, the overall picture is we got to stoop down and lift people up, okay? That's what Yahweh does to us, and, and I believe that people interpret Hebrew say that it actually describes it that way in the scripture, that he comes down and lifts us up, he blesses us, and that's what he did as the savior of the world, to come down and to lift us up, to, to make us right with him, to make us righteous and to bless us. Um, not just with salvation, which is the first and most important thing is salvation, but also with the Rukadesh, the Holy Spirit, that empowers us to keep the law that was given on the first Pentecost. The first Pentecost was the giving of the law, and then the new covenant Pentecost that we read about is the coming of the Holy Ghost or the Rukadesh, the Holy Spirit. And so this, the Bible tells us in both the Old and the New covenants of the Bible that the Ruach HaKadosh empowers us to keep the law, empowers us to follow Yahweh, to make him our king, our lawgiver, and our judge, so he can save us, as it says in Isaiah 33:22. Either Yeshua, who some people refer to as Jesus, um, through mistranslation, uh, but it's actually Yeshua, he, he gave us salvation, he gave us instructions, he told us what to do. And the problem is, is that people put that away, they put, they, they transgress the law, they put it away, and as a result, there are people that publish books now and pastors who are perverted, who are doing evil. And most people that attend a church agree that what those people are doing is are evil. But their excuse for violating the Bible is they say that they are no longer under the law anymore. They're set free. But we know that the book of Acts says that's not true. It says the only false witnesses said that against Yeshua and against um Stephen, it said that when, when Stephen was being killed, uh, when he was being put to death, that false witnesses rose up and said that uh, Stephen and Yeshua taught against the laws of Moshe. They were false witnesses, therefore what they said was a lie. Okay, The truth is, is, that, um, is that they never taught against that. In fact, in the book of Acts, Paul is, is uh, accused of doing the same thing. They falsely accused Paul of teaching against the Torah and telling people to violate the Torah. And Paul said, no, he said, that is not true. He, he refuted all those claims, accusations against him and said they were not true. And we know uh, through the ministry and the body of believers out there that have studied the epistles and the gospels that it does not speak against the Torah. Uh, the only place that we see that is when Paul says that it's okay to eat food sacrificed to idols. That's the only place where... Uh, and that's in 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe, chapter 8. That's the only place we see Paul say anything against the Torah. When he's talking about the law of circumcision, uh, what Paul's actually referring to is salvation through circumcision. We know this because in uh, the Galatians there was a party uh, called the Circumcision Party, apparently, that believed that in order to be saved you had to be circumcised. And that you could be saved through circumcision, which is salvation by works. And salvation by works does not exist. Not in the new covenant. It does not exist. You cannot be saved by works. You, you are saved by the blood and the sacrifice of Yeshua Mashiach on the cross. The Savior of the world who came uh, for us to die on the cross for our sins. It's the only way to be saved. There's no other way. But what we do see uh, throughout the Bible is that there is a pattern. And we see it in Exodus. We see it in the books of Judges. We see it all over the place where... Um, Israel sins against Yahweh. Um, he, the Israel transgresses the law. They're, they're put into captivity, and then they're saved first. Yahweh stoops down and saves them. We read about in the Psalms, it says he got angry. Coals came out of his nose, and he came down and rescued David, Dawid, 
He rescued him from his enemies, okay? So this is the pattern. He rescues them, just like he rescued him out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery, and then gives them the law and tells them what to do and brings them back into obedience. But we see this happen over and over. We also see it with Josiah. Uh, when King Josiah stepped up, uh, the law was made known, and when it was, he rent his garments because he couldn't believe. He's like, wow, we're, we're transgressing this law. This is terrible. We've got to follow it. We've got to live by every word that proceeds about the Yahweh, which occurs in Deuteronomy. We've got to live by every word that proceeds about the Yahweh, and in Luke 4.4 4, and in Matthew 4.4, 4, depending on how it's interpreted. I believe it's definitely in Matthew 4.4. 4. Luke 4.4 4 can be interpreted differently depending on the source that you get it from. Uh, the Aramaic Peshitta, I believe, says that it's the son of man who has to live by every word that the mouth of Yahweh. But in Matthew, it says that it's it's men shall live by every word that proceeds the mouth of Yahweh. So, uh, again, it depends on your source. I'm not sure what it says in the Greek. Um, I know what it says in the Aramaic, uh, based upon the translations that I've read. So, anyways, I haven't learned to speak or read Aramaic or Hebrew yet entirely. Uh, that's something that I've got to have time to work on, and I have been short on time. So prayer for that will help. But it's this stooping down that's important. We have we can't just turn a blind eye to evil that's going on in the world. Um, years ago, back around 2010, there was a woman, and uh, apparently there were several witnesses that saw that a man tried to murder her in front of her children. Her children also testified to it. This is what I was told. And it was very strange to me that uh, when she moved away, uh, it didn't seem like law enforcement was doing anything about it. Nobody in the community was doing anything about it. She had a protection order. And I felt obligated to stoop down and help out. Now, maybe the way I did it was sinful. At the time, I didn't know the law. And so um, there, were, there were certain parts of things that I didn't know. Maybe it was right. I felt led, led by Yahweh to do it, though I stooped down. I put my life aside, and I tried to protect that woman and those children. And everybody tried to stand against me. They, they did not like that. They thought that was terrible. Um, in fact, I was told by uh, very religious people that uh, in, the, in the Christian churches that it would be better for her and her children to be raped and molested than for me to protect them. And so, um, and I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the situation. Okay, it's not to raise myself up here. I'm talking about the situation, that the, why the judgment is coming. Okay, And this happened to my classmates um, that grew up here in this town. They weren't sheltered like I was. I was sent to a Christian school. They were not. And so a lot of them were sexually assaulted on drugs, um, alcohol, and people looked away. They didn't do what they needed to to stop it. They didn't help people. The same thing happened uh, in 2016, I believe it was. I think that was the year. Uh, there was a man that came to our door, he was on drugs, and he threatened us, told us we couldn't go outside, and, uh, you know, and I told the authorities, with, um, and within like 12, hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, he was dead. I had to go back and look at that again to get the time right, because I don't know his time of death, I'd have to look at the time of death, and I'd, I'd have to look for other information about when I talked with the officer, but when I talked to the officer, he said, hey, don't turn a blind eye to this, don't ignore it, get rid of the drugs or somebody's going to die. And he died. Okay? Why? Because somebody turned a blind eye. Somebody turned a blind eye to a problem. They would not stoop down and do what they could to fix it. Okay? And this problem, it's, it's a community issue. And I've been told by the authorities it's a state issue. It's a statewide issue. Um, and it seems like they set everybody up for failure and dependence on the government. Because when you call a lot of pastors, a lot of churches for help, you go to them and you say... Uh, somebody wants prayer, somebody needs help, they refer you to psychological services. They say, send that person down there. Um, they all, sometimes you go into a church and you see a pastor and he's with a rich, powerful person. Listen in the past, I'm not saying that happens now, but in the past you'd see him with a rich, powerful person pastoring them, helping them out because they put a bunch of money in the plate or they were powerful or something, but they didn't have time for other people. And so, you know, I don't think we should ever turn anyone away from prayer. Yeshua Mashiach told us that we should pray for our enemies. If you should pray for your enemies, then you need to pray for people. So uh, the only thing I could think of, but I don't see it in Scripture, is that if uh, King Herod said, I want to go worship the, the King of Kings, Yahweh, or I, and Yeshua HaMashiach, I want to worship Him, or I want prayer, or whatever, then maybe, you know, if, if Yahweh told us we're in danger, 
stay away from them. They're plotting against us. They don't actually want prayer. Um, but even then, I don't really see that in the scriptures. I see turning the other cheek, praying for your enemies, praying for those who persecute you. What did Herod do? He was going to persecute him. He was going to put him to death. So uh, we, we should not refuse people. And instead, uh, somebody was talking to me recently, and he told me, he said, he said, there's a lot of selfish people in the world, and he said that they cannot be helping other people unless they're involved in a church ministry. They've got to be involved in a church outreach program so they can give to the poor and the needy. And first of all, I can tell you scripturally that's not true. You can help the poor and the needy directly. But secondly, um, you know, what does the church do? What does the church do? If, if people, uh, like my grandmother... Um, need assistance. They need someone to come in and visit them and help them. Does the church do that? Not that I'm aware of. I've went to the community groups and I've asked for volunteers to come in and help her. I haven't received an answer. Um, they'd only do it for cash. Cash is the only way that they help people um, that I know of. And, you know, I could be wrong, but I've reached out on community websites and Facebook groups and said, hey, is there anyone that would volunteer, anyone that would help? And the answer was no. They said, you need to go get death services, hospice services, and that's not going to help either. Um, but it doesn't matter whether it's a crime that's being ignored, an injustice. Uh, not helping the elderly and disabled is an injustice. The Bible tells us you got to help the widows, the, the sick, the lame, the orphans, um, you know, all these people in need. And what is a tithe? A tithe, in the, a tithe in the Bible says that it's food, or it's drink, or it's seed. If it's converted into cash, it's supposed to be converted back into food, and that's only for transportation purposes. Um, so the tithe is supposed to go to the poor and the needy and those that, that need food and, and drink and seed. Okay, That's where it's supposed to go. That's what it is, and that's where it's supposed to go. Uh, you can make offerings. Uh, to churches, if you feel led to, if you believe that's what you're supposed to do, if you're offering to free will offerings, you also make those to the poor and the needy, as far as I know. But the Bible does give specific instructions for different tithes and different offerings at different times. And since the temple is no more, uh, you need to interpret those as best you can and give the way that you believe you're supposed to. Um, that's, that's what I believe, and that's what uh, the mentors I had growing up taught me about giving, is they said just... Read the Bible, pray, and do what it says. That's what they told me when I asked about giving. They said, just read and pray and, and do what Yahweh tells you to do. And and that's important. We want to live by everywhere that proceeds about the Yahweh. And uh, we get criticism uh, from the church, from a lot of people, when we want to live by every word that proceeds about the Yahweh. There's a lot of persecution for that. Uh, they persecute people without um, a, me a reason for it, without, if you really think it through, there's no reason for it. There's there's parents that turn against their children or even persecute their own parents. And it goes backwards and forwards. Um, you know, the persecution up and down. Uh, children children persecuting their parents, parents accu accusing and persecuting their children. Um, making strange decisions like, you know, you can't have access to food um, if you're going to do what the Bible says, right? You can't have... We're going to put you in a nursing home if you do what the Bible says. I've heard someone tell me that. It's a woman who's over 60 years old told me that her children, she believed we're going to put her in the nursing home if she didn't quit using the name Yeshua from the Bible and if she kept doing what the Bible said. They were going to they were going to put her away uh, somewhere. So she got out of there. She escaped and, and she, she got out of there. So there's been a lot of persecution, but... Lots of pastors are coming to the truth and lots of people all over the world. And usually once they come to the truth, they realize if they're pastors in Matthew 23, 8 through 12, that they no longer want to be called pastors or rabbis or teachers. They, a lot of them will come out of that, but some of them don't. And they get a lot of followers and that can be, oh, it's, it's hard to say because the Bible says not to do it. So it's, it's a tricky thing. Um, having a following isn't terrible in the beginning. As long as those people learn that they've got to minister on their own. They've got to become ministers and they've got to read the Bible. And they've, you can point them to the truth, but they've got to dig into it. They've got to have a, ta a desire for it. They've got to learn it. So what we've got going on here and in this state is there's, there's child molestation. There's rape. Um, there's been, I believe there's been murder. I've seen it on TV. Uh, there's been a lot of things, and what does the justice system do, or injustice system? They give 30-day jail sentences, 90-day jail sentences, 
um, and they change charges. So somebody comes in and, and they raped somebody and they change their charges from rape to something else, like assault or whatever, just something lower. And, you know, they, they change everything around. Uh, they turn evil good and good evil. They protect... They protect predators, whether they're animal predators or human predators, sexual predators. They protect predators, drug dealers, all these people. And they persecute and prosecute anybody that tries to stop them or speaks against them. So, uh, for example, I was arrested um, when my ex-wife turned to drugs and she started uh, selling drugs. You know, I, I actually saw her selling prescription uh, drugs. She had medicine and she had complained to me, told me her teeth hurt really bad because she had them pulled. So I kept calling the doctor. I'm like, she needs something. She needs something. So we got it. And pretty soon I caught her. These guys came in the house. She was selling prescriptions to them. Uh, she went over, sold her food stamps. She, she sold all kinds of things. People started texting me, asking her to deliver drugs to families with children. Um, and I said, stop, please stop. I said three times. I said, these families are under investigation. They're going to lose their kids. Please stop um, selling the drugs. And uh, and she kept doing it. Yes, shalom to some, somebody out there was chatting. It only shows it for a second on my phone. And it's really small, so I don't know who said it. But, um, but yeah, peace be unto you and to everyone um, who's watching. But what I'm trying to say is, is that I, I asked her to stop doing the drugs, and um, I was arrested. She she had my phone in her hand, the phone I had at the time. It's not this one. It's one like it. She had a phone in her hand, my phone, and it looked like she was deleting the, the text messages that said that she was had sold drugs and was you know. So I grabbed the phone and and I was arrested because I tried to stop her from selling um, drugs to a family with children, and. You know, then after that, they asked me if I wanted to be involved in the community drug program and stopping people from selling drugs. And it didn't make sense to me because I'd been arrested for doing that. And so it's it's really weird because they've got billboards up. They had a billboard up coming into town here recently that says that there's not supposed to be a stigma with mental illness. Everybody's supposed to be mentally ill. And that's what it says. Everybody's supposed to be mentally ill and you're supposed to go down and, and talk to these people. What do they do for you? If you go down and talk to the mental health people, they just listen. They're, they're just listeners. And when they're done listening, not all of them, but some of them, um, they go out and they go to the bar and they, they drink and they party. And a lot of politicians do the same thing, whether it's judges, prosecutors, sheriffs, deputies. They get time off, they go out, they drink, they do whatever. And it's not just them, it's it's bankers, it's it's everybody. They, they go out and they do these things. When are they going to read the Bible? When do you have time to read the Bible? Now, if you're serious and you want to know what the Bible says and you want to do it, every moment in your life, like every minute, you want to know what you're supposed to be doing, you know? A lot of times before I pick something up to eat, I'll open the Bible to see what I'm supposed to be eating. I'll open up to a random spot and I'll just start reading um, somewhere in here. And sometimes I'll be reading about meat or maybe I'll even read about bread or vegetables or whatever and I'll read something and I'll read something about it or against it or whatever and I'll say okay I guess that's what I'm supposed to be eating I'm, I'm trying to to seek him at all times and know what he wants me to do and what he doesn't want me to do and how he wants me to do it and in the last couple of days I kept being confronted with scriptures about being told what to say and to prophesy um, about Moshe going before Pharaoh and I'm not sure if I missed out an opportunity to do that yesterday or the day before when I was out running errands, I think it was on uh, on the, the second day of the week, um, you know, but, or it could have been, it could have been the fourth day of the week, but, but in any case, I'm doing it now because this just keeps being brought in front of me, and the Syrians, I, I believe I'm being told the Syrians are going to attack, so what I've been told for a long time is that, uh, you know, Syrians, Assyrians, radical people, probably Islamic people are going to, they're going to attack. They're going to attack and they're going to get rid of the wicked people. Why? Because Yahweh stirs up their hearts. It's what we see in the scriptures. He stirs up their hearts um, to go after the wicked. And we've seen it happen again and again in history. Uh, we've seen a destruction of, there was a, a temple to Baal that was built to Baal out of stone and the Islamic people came in and they destroyed that temple 
And when they did it, the news, the media went crazy. They, they said it was evil, terrorist activity, something, war crimes. And people tried to rebuild the Temple of Baal. They actually wanted to rebuild it. We're reading in here about rebuilding today in Isaiah 9, 9 um, through 18. And they, they actually tried to rebuild it. And when they did rebuild it, the news said that several schools, public schools, were shut down because they said that the schools reported demons came in and attacked the children and the, the teachers, and they had to evacuate the schools and shut them down uh, when they rebuilt the gateway to the Temple of Baal and unveiled it. Um, not only that, but the same type of Islamic people, they came in and started destroying churches. They started burning down churches. It was on TV, and people were horrified by this. They, they just thought it was terrible that these churches were being burned down. And I couldn't quite figure it out, and they were telling me, they said, well, there's all this artwork in the churches, all this, this pagan uh, artwork, all these pagan deities, they're relabeled with Christian names. They'll take Jupiter, and they'll call him Saint so-and-so, or whatever. Or they'll take um, Venus and say it's Mary, the mother of Yeshua. Um, they will, they use the Sacred Heart, which is something that was involved, I believe, with Tammuz, Baal, and, uh, and Ishtar, and uh, Nimrod, you know, it's the, the Sacred Heart, I, at least that's where I was told it originated, I've been trying to do some homework on that one, but they take all these things, and they rebrand them, and they put them in churches, and um, not that many years ago, my father was invited into a church um, back east, and he took pictures because he was asking me, he sent me a picture of gargoyles up on pillars in a church. And he suggested, why are these here? And at the time, I didn't know. But since I've watched documentaries and done research and homework, um, you know, I have good uh, reason to believe that it's either because it was originally a pagan temple or it was converted into a pagan temple later, or originally it was built as a church uh, or a pagan temple disguised as a church or something, I don't know. Um, but you see, on a lot of churches, you'll see serpents, winged serpents like dragons um, as door handles on, on churches. Um, it's it's very strange. There's, there's lots of strange things with all of that. But basically, you know, I heard a group of men, I don't know if it was on the second day or the fourth day of the week, I heard a group of men when I was filling out papers um, that I had to and mail them back in, and they were speaking in public, and they were talking about how just talking isn't solving any problems. They'd sit there and talk about all the pol political problems. They talked about firearms, people blaming everything on firearms, and, uh, and instead of on the people using them. They're talking about all these weird things and not being able to solve any problems. And the thing is, the problems are solved here. This is where the problems are solved, is in the Bible, the Holy Bible, the Word of Yahweh. That's where the problems are solved, Okay. If you can't make anyone else your king, your lawgiver, or judge. A king is the administrator, like a president, right? And the, uh, thank you. And uh, the, um, who is that that's speaking? Shayla. Okay, well, thank you, Shayla. Um, so, so he's got to be your king. He's the king of kings, and Elohim of Elohims, okay? He's got to be your lawgiver. You can't go to the man-made legislature. You got to go here. You got to go here and look at the law, Okay. And not just here, but you got to listen as well. And he's your judge. He's the chief judge. Now, obviously, the Bible talks about setting up judges. And that's great if that, you know, when, when that needs to happen, that's great. But he's our chief judge. He, he is the judge. Okay? A king, our lawgiver, and our judge, and he'll save us. And so we have to make him our king, our lawgiver, and our judge. And that solves the problem. Now, there's time and place. Like I said, he'll send the Syrians in. And they'll do violence to wicked people, and they'll they'll deal with it because that's Yahweh's way. Uh, the seventh way he's gonna he's he's gonna deal with it. He's gonna send stir up people to come in and, and deal with evil, unless there's repentance, unless they return to his ways and his word. But why? You have to start over. You have to start over. Okay. You can't start with the Roman Republic with common law and all these ways of man. You can't build on that. That's sinking sand. Okay. You cannot build on that. I've had to learn it the hard way. Um, you, you can't do it. You've got to just have this. This is it. The Holy Bible. That's it. Okay. Uh, hopefully in Hebrew and Aramaic and the original writings, what they were written in the manuscripts. You got to found yourself on that, and then you can establish a community. You can establish a country. But 
if you go out and say, well, we're going to get rid of this politician, we're going to vote in that one, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, they, they're twice as bad as the previous ones, okay? You, you bring in, uh, you say, okay, well, we had Trump, and now we got Joe Biden, and then you had Obama, and you've got all these people, and it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the prosecutor here was fired and they replaced him. He'd still come out of the same system, the same bar association, the same training of the ways of man. They come out of that. So as long as you're dealing with um, people that are a product of this education system, thank you, the people of this education system that are coming out of this, that's that's what you're going to get. You can't you can't go to the car factory and try to get it to produce something else other than a car, right? You go to the car factory, it's got molds to build a car, car engine. You can't build a jet fighter unless you change the whole inside of this factory. You have to refit the whole factory. And that's what has to happen to us is the temple of Yahweh and the church is we have to throw out all the ways of men we have to full because there's a mold in there, and what's that mold in the church doing? It's stamping out Christians that have been taught not to absolutely do not follow the law, absolutely do not follow what the Bible says, because we've been set free from that. You don't have to do that anymore, and you've got to conform to the ways of man. You got to do what man says. That's that's what they teach. Um, I listened to the Church Channel TCT before we got rid of the the television, the television, and they asked the pastors on there, they asked the pastors, they said, where in the Bible, in here, where in the Bible does it say you got to have a marriage license? And so the pastor answered and he said, well, it's not, not in here. He says, he says the federal statute says that pastors have, can only marry people with marriage licenses. They have to have marriage licenses and the pastor teach them. So when they asked the pastor where in the Bible, where in the Bible the law was, Instead of instead of uh, saying where the law was in the Bible, he quoted the federal law. He quoted the laws of man. So that's his Bible. The pastor, his Bible has become uh, the statutes, laws, the commandments and doctrines of men. And the Bible says that if you follow the commandments and doctrines of men, you're worshiping Yahweh in vain. You're following him in vain. And that's what happens. So that's why he has to wipe everything out and start over. That's why it has to happen. That's why it has to be purged. That's why he's proclaimed his judgment, is because you can't you can't do this. It happened in ancient times long ago, um, after after the resurrection. Uh, there were man-made governments out there, and they thought they could reinterpret and change the Bible. And so what they would do is they would read the Bible and they'd say, "What do we do uh, to a rapist? Uh, what do we do here? Oh, it says we got to put him to death. Okay, so what did they do? They said." That's cruel and in, un, inhumane punishment. We don't want to put this guy to death. So they changed the rule and made up their own, and they said, we're going to cut off one of his lips. That's literally what they did. Or sometimes they'd say, we're going to stamp an A for adultery on somebody. Or, you know, or whatever it was, they'd come up with something different. And today, what is it? It's a 30-day jail sentence. It's a 90-day jail sentence with rehabilitation that involves talking to people that just sit there and listen and then go to the bar and drink afterwards. There was a, a girl a couple years ago, I don't know how long ago, and she said she was a child psychologist in the Lewiston-Clarkston area over here in uh, Clarkston, Washington, uh, Lewiston, Idaho. And she said she might be interested in dating me. And I talked to her and she told me, she says, you know where I go after work? I said, where? She says, I go to an LGBTQ XYZ uh, bar and I go and drink. And I'm thinking, this doesn't make any sense. You, you, you're, you're a counselor. You're supposed to be guiding and leading these children to righteousness. And this is what you do after work. I don't get it, right? And this is what I talk about, about trying to produce good fruit out of bad fruit, right? How do you produce good fruit out of bad fruit? You, you can't do it. The Bible says so in the New Covenant. It says that if you've got a bad tree, you're going to get bad fruit. So... If your children or you or whoever are connecting up and receiving from a bad tree and you're the fruit, what are you going to become? You're going to become rotten, right? That's what's going to happen. If you're grafted in, if you as a branch are grafted into death instead of life, you're going to be dead. You, you can't receive life from death. You can't be grafted into death and receive life. It doesn't, it doesn't work.
and it's that like that in marriage. Um, if you are alive in the Word, and you marry someone that's dead, and they're just trying to drain you and suck everything out of you, um, it's gonna it's gonna do the same thing. Yeah, the the lady in the chat, uh, she says that you can't have fellowship. You can't. The Bible says you can't fellowship with them. You can't do that. You're not supposed to be an equally yoked. You're not supposed to be in those type of relationships, which leads me into something very important, okay? Very, very important. A lot of people out there that watch these types of videos, they hear what I'm saying, and they say, this guy's telling me to follow the law. He's telling me to do what the Bible says. And they'll just go, click, we're off. We're not going to listen anymore, or they'll block me, or whatever. They're like, oh, no, we can't do that. The Bible, that's the Bible. Oh, no. And these are Christians, right? And no, we can't have the Bible. What are you talking about? And... So, yeah, this lady loves the law. Yes, that's great. That's good. And so, where was I going with this? So, before you get married, this is what's so important before you get married. Figure out what the truth is before you get married. And here's why. Here's why. Let's say that you're watching this video right now. And your belief, not the lady's chat, and she's awesome. But your belief is that the law is done away with. That you've got to follow... All the man-made holidays and festivals that violate the law, okay, that you got to do that, and um, that's just the way you live. You like to do all these popular things on on your Sabbath day, the Sunday, which is not a Sabbath day, okay? It's not the Bible. The pastors say that that's not the Sabbath day. They say that the Sabbath day has been abolished and they don't follow it anymore. But if you believe your Sabbath day is on Sunday and you go out and you, you watch football, you're not reading the Word. You're, you're watching football and you're working on the Sabbath day and you're doing all these things, okay? You've got a wrong belief. You've got a wrong belief. And now you're going to get married. So who are you looking for? Someone else with the same belief, the same wrong belief, okay? And yeah, the law is not a burden. So you're looking for someone else with the same wrong belief or worse belief or whatever, and maybe slightly better, and you marry them. Now you're bound together with them for the rest of your life. That's what the Bible says. You're not supposed to divorce. Yahweh hates divorce. I never should have agreed to a divorce. I learned that a year later that I should not have agreed to the divorce. Um, it was t it, Yahweh had a different plan. But I agreed to divorce. It's over with now. It can't be undone. Um, and the reason it can't be undone is because she went out and slept with all kinds of people. So I can't. we can't do that. The Bible says that's an abomination. But... If you get married to somebody, you get married to somebody and they have a different belief, they don't believe in doing what the Bible says, and then you get married and all of a sudden you come to the truth, or they do, and they say, we got to start doing what the Bible says, then you're going to clash, you're going to have problems, and it can lead to a divorce, even though you're not supposed to divorce. Um, there was a lady that talked to me, and I think she might still follow me, watch my videos, I don't know. And she said she was Messianic Torah observant follower of Yeshua Mashiach. She's, she's supposed to be doing what's right. And Yahweh spoke to her personally and told her, stay away from this man. He's evil. What'd she do? She went out and tried to date him. Why? Because she was physically attracted to him and he was a pastor. The, the position he had ended up being a total disaster immediately. Just as she was warned in the dream she had from Yahweh, it was a complete disaster. So, um... She ended up marrying a guy that she was physically attracted to, who was not a Christian. Um, he didn't follow, the, no interest in the Bible whatsoever. And she's a Messianic, Torah observant follower of Yeshua Mashiach. How does this work? And I was surprised by this. I've been really surprised by, by this in several women, that they actually cared more about physical appearances. And they said they're following the Bible. And that was their thing and so this lady gets married it's not working so eventually she decides she wants a divorce the guy's cheating on him or cheating on her and she decides she wants a divorce and she comes starts talking to me and i'm like nope i said i'm sorry uh i said you made a mistake and decided to get married and i said divorce is a mistake i said don't let one mistake lead you to another mistake because i said i was married my ex-wife cheated on me and I agreed when she filed for divorce against me. I agreed with it. And a year later, Yahweh spoke to me. And he says, no. Nope. He says, you should have waited and prayed and stayed separate from her. And I would have fixed her and turned her around. And 
would have worked things out. That's what he told me. And and so, and yeah, we got to love Yahweh more than anyone. We got to seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else has to go. And you got to be prepared for that. You got to count the cost and you got to be prepared for that. Because when you decide to do that, when you decide to, to seek the kingdom first and his righteousness, anything can happen. You could lose your house. You could lose everything because people, when you start following the law, when you start doing what the Bible says, everyone, anyone could turn against you, people you'd never expect. And the only reason that I've been prepared for that is because when I went to the courts, I, I expected them to do what was right and they didn't. Um, every every turn they did what was wrong, they did evil. They, they violated their own laws, they violated every kind of law. And so because of that, I've learned through experience that even the people I trust the most, even the people I love the most that are there for me in my life, I still have to set up guard. I still have to stand guard and say, I could lose everything tomorrow. Um, you know, if, if Yahweh allowed it, right? Um, evil people could come up and say that I'm insane because I'm doing what the Bible says and they could try to have me put away. Uh, just like the lady... The, the, that's over 60, that her children apparently tried to have her put away. Um, you know, they could try to say, I'm irresponsible. Uh, they could, they could do a lot of things they could try to do. Um, you know, they could say, I'm not going to or buy you groceries anymore. Um, you know, uh, or whatever. I had somebody a while ago do that. Um, they actually, uh, there's a debate going on about this right now, but my memory of it is I was told, that I couldn't use cash because they had evil images on it. And I was like, all right, I can agree with that. And then the same person told me, I won't buy you groceries unless you give me cash. I only accept cash. So they trapped me. And then I got a text message today saying that that was a lie, that they never said that, that they never said that I had to get rid of the cash because it had evil symbols on it. So that's not my memory of the conversation. So that's where, you know, I'm, I'm just... I, that's that's going on but that can happen and why because i said that the christmas is pagan i said christmas is pagan and i sent videos documentaries proving it i don't know if they even watched them but i said that and that led to cash is evil you got to give me all your cash because it's got pagan symbols on it i said perfect i said that's fine i said uh what what, what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a debit card and i'm going to get checks and I said, I'll even get another debit card for you to borrow when I need you to get something. I'll give you a, your own debit card. I'll change the PIN number to a PIN you know so that you don't have to learn a new PIN. I'll make it as convenient and easy as possible. Do what you say. Trying to establish peace, right? Shalom. Trying to do peace. And they say, no, I'll only accept cash. Even though they have sent me numerous times to the store with a card and told me to go buy them something, treating others the way you want to be treated. The hypocrisy, we're reading about hypocrisy today. So the other side of it is I didn't have any witnesses, right? So I'm being told that I'm lying and they didn't say what I remember them saying. So because of peace, I have to say, well, that's the way I remembered it, okay? And I agree with what I remembered. I agree that what I remember you saying is right. There are evil symbols on cash so i'm not going to use them i agree with that um, i don't want any appearance of evil that's in first thessalonians first thessalonians says we can't have any appearance of evil and what that means is is that if i if i'm seen in public i'm seen on youtube and i do something that appears to violate the bible appears to be wrong I, i'm not going to do that i'm not going to have any appearance of evil and the reason why is because then i would lead people astray i'd be a hypocrite and I think that's mainstream. I think that's mainstream. And the reason I say that is, is because a lot of people tell me, um, oh boy, someone says they're homeless and they need help um, in the chat. But, and that's what I'm talking about, stooping down and helping people. So we'll have to see if that person uh, really needs help and if we can help them. Um, I, the, the problem is a lot of people out there, I get messages all the time on Facebook telling me that people need help and and, uh, you know, I make, well, I can't say what I make from YouTube, but that's my primary income. And it's really dicey, especially right now, because I had to stop live streaming my, my chickens. I don't want to talk too much about me, but I've had to li stop live streaming my chickens because um, I had a problem with a music company 
uh, bringing claims against me and they got strikes put on my channel even though I had permission to use the music and so we're communicating and I'm, the artist is trying to help me, Ian Michaels is trying to help me because he's the music artist. Um, he's a messianic tour observant music artist. He's got some great music. And yeah, they're watching live streams. So I'd love to get those live streams going again. That's going to take some prayer because I got to get the company that's dealing with the music that's bringing the claims against me to stop doing that. And so, oh, awesome. Someone's in Oregon watching. That's great. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, we, we, it's important before you get married to make sure that you know what your beliefs are, that you know the truth. And if you're not interested in the truth, if you're not interested in even, like, I mean, if somebody tells me, I'm just going to put this out there, if somebody tells me that the earth is flat, or it's a square, or it's a potato chip, or it's a lemon, or whatever, um, I at least need to be open-minded enough to research that and see where it goes. And I'll give you my opinion on it really quick, my present opinion on it, not future, not past, but present opinion on it. I don't think I could prove that the earth is any shape. I don't think I could um, because scientifically there's too many problems to sort out. And the, the issue, and somebody might be able to explain it to me, that I have with the, uh, the, I don't care what shape the earth is either. The issue I have with the round earth uh, thing is the, the north star in the sky. I'm pointing where north is from where I am. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be a fixed star that never moves. But the earth is moving around the sun. And not only that, now scientists claim that the earth is not just moving around the sun, but that the sun and the earth are moving. I don't have a 3D animation, so I'm going to do it this way. The sun and the earth are moving this way in a spiral all the time. And somehow the North Star is always in the same spot and the constellations rotate around it. And yet apparently the sun and the earth are traveling together in it. I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't understand it exactly. I have some theories on maybe how it would work, but I I don't know. So I don't have a scientific proof, but I would at least research it, right? At least go out and research. I at least want to go out and research what people say. So if somebody tells me the earth is flat, I want to research that. If somebody tells me it's round, I want to research that. You know, whatever. Just so that I have some information on it. So that I'm not sitting there saying I'm just not going to learn. I don't want to be like the, the stiff-necked people in the Bible who aren't even going to consider anything. Who are just going to say this is the way it is. I'm too old to change. Whatever, you know, or... Or doctor so-and-so said, so I got to agree with them. I can't agree with what you say. Or pastor so-and-so or the TV said, and that's the way it is, right? Um, I've got to be open-minded to the truth. And so if you're not open-minded to the truth and you can't read the word yourself, you're going to have a problem. Now, I'll tell you how most people that I've listened to have arrived at the truth. And it's really simple. What you do is you have this moment in your life where you sit down and you say, I've been taught. I've been taught by my parents. I've been taught by pastors. I've been taught by the TV. I've been taught by books. I've been taught by all kinds of things what to believe. Um, you know, pre-made religion. And so what you got to do is you got to say, I'm going to start over. Okay, I only want to believe what the Bible says. Because I'm supposed to be following the Bible. I'm supposed to believe the Bible. So, all right, somebody sent me an email for a PayPal request for cash. All right, and so we'll have to we'll have to look into that. I get a lot of those. I get a lot of uh, a lot of requests for cash. And if I had the cash and I was able to investigate, I would do it. I do give to people, by the way. I do give cash to people because the Bible says we got it. We got to give offerings. We got to have tithes. So I do help poor people. I don't want to. The right hand's not supposed to know what the left hand's doing, so I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get credit for it or anything. But out of trying to, you know, be righteous and say, we've got to do what the Bible says, I'm going to say, I do what that. Okay. It? But i got to investigate it and know that people actually need help and what they need. And it's usually not a good idea to send people cash. It's usually a good idea to send them what they need, like the Bible says with the tithes. They need food, send them food. They need, uh, maybe they need a cell phone plan. Send them a cell phone plan. You don't have to send cash. You don't have to do that because they go out and buy drugs, whatever. You don't have to do that. They say they need something. You can buy it and send it to them. 
You don't have to. You don't have to do that. So we we're talking about the lady says clean slate. That's that's what we're talking about here. So you you start over. You throw out everything you ever uh, heard, and you start with the Bible. And this is a continual process. Uh, last week, I think it was, I would not eat um, beef with cheese on it because I thought I wasn't supposed to because it says you're not supposed to eat a kid boiled in his mother's milk. And what did my mother tell me? She says, Justin, she says, um, I believe that a kid is a goat, not a cow. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I researched that and I talked to people and it turns out after and I asked a lot of people and they said, yes, it's only a goat. You cannot boil a goat in its mother's milk. You can eat a cheeseburger as long as the beef is kosher and everything. You can eat it. I'm like, all right. So you got to be open-minded to that. There are people that have been in Israel that become rabbis. There are people that have been in seminary and become pastors. It doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on. And they get this man-made established stuff and it's wrong. Not only is it wrong, it's a sickness. And what did Yeshua say? He yeah. says, in vain did they worship me because they've exchanged uh, the truth. They've exchanged what they're supposed to have for the doctrines and commandments of men. They, they worship the doctrines and commandments of men. You can't do that. Okay? So we got to get rid of all that and just do what the Bible says. So if you teach anything in addition to that, or you do things in addition to that and say because the Bible says, then you got a problem. you got a problem. So you got you got to get rid of all that. Okay, you got to get rid of all that and say, what does the Bible actually say? And you got to you got to get into that and right. and you got to follow it and live by every word that proceeds the mouth of Yahweh, as Yeshua Mashiach said, as the Savior said. And once you get there, you're great. And like I said, this pattern we see in the Bible over and over again is salvation first, and then the law. That's what we see. The people are captive. They turn to Yahweh and say, help us, help us, save us. They turn back towards Jerusalem. He brings them out. And he says, okay, now here's the judge. Here's the law. Here's Ezra, right? Here's here. I've set you free. I put you back where you're supposed to be now. Here's the instructions. Do it. And that's what happened to me. That's my testimony. I was arrested. Um, my, I lost my home. Uh, the people around me were being persecuted, raped, child molestation, all these things. There was nothing I could do about it unless I wanted to try to take matters in my own hands like Moshe did, like Moses did. So I prayed. I started reading the Bible. And the Bible told me to, pr to prophesy against them. So I did. And you can see the link in the description of this video. It's an HTML link. It's mindblowing.com forward slash prophecy with a capital P and then .html, the link's there, you can click it, you don't have to type it in. And, or you can go to mindblowing.com and click Future Predicted, either way. And it will take you there and you can see the video of what happened. Uh, the national news recorded it, state news. Uh, I prophesied against the state seven prophecies, and six of them have already come true. This video is about the seventh one to come. And so the, Yahweh sent the largest fire ever upon the entire state of Washington. It consumed the entire state. Uh, there was a massive flood. Like I said, you can watch all this. You can watch me prophesy against it before I was following the Torah because I wasn't following the Torah. So I was still being rescued at that time. And so I prophesied these things. I told them I had to follow the law even though I wasn't, didn't know I needed to. I was just reading right out of the Bible. And so I told them, I told them they got to follow the law. I, I told them that they had to uh, help my ex-wife get uh, counseling in a, in, a, in a Celebrate Recovery program. I told them that they needed to arrest the pedophiles and the rapists. I told them that they needed to follow the law. I told them a bunch of things. I told them they needed to compensate me and set me free. Uh, but they didn't do any of that. And so all, all six of the seven prophecies have already happened. The seventh one's still to come. And so first was the, the fire across the entire state that also went into Oregon and Idaho is an unstoppable fire it killed people it was it was crazy it went around us though thankfully thankfully where i am we were safe but it went across the state and then uh became the massive flood and then there was the massive storm winter storm that went into spokane and the whole area and that was pretty crazy because it happened exactly as i said which was just it brought it was i don't know i, I don't want to go to tears on camera but it just brought me to my knees thinking about it. It's just crazy if that's the right words for it. And so this giant storm came upon Spokane. It, nobody knew it was coming. 
because, I mean, I said it was coming, but nobody knew it was coming because it was wintertime and it was hot. And that doesn't happen here. And it was wintertime and it was hot. And so all of a sudden, this, this uh, winter storm came in and it just consumed Spokane, Washington and the whole area and it got cold overnight. It knocked down the power poles. The power went out, okay? Uh, the woman that was there, who you'll see in the video, the lady says she's going to watch the video after this, the lady that testified that was there in the video said her car was blowing around outside and moving around. Fire and lightning came from the sky, um, and trees blew over, and they couldn't get warm. This is why I prophesied. I said that, that there would be no fire to warm at. You couldn't get warm because the power was going to go out, and it did. And so then, after that, yeah, I know, it's it's crazy. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. So after that, uh, what happened next? I'm trying to think and just go through this. You're going to get to see, they go to the website, you'll see everything. Um, so before any of that happened, this is the other thing, I didn't prophesy this. Uh, there was a deputy that came to our house, an evil, evil deputy. And he threatened me and my ex-wife, we were still together, and he says, you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. You're stuck in your house. You can go on the side street and you can go on the highway. I'm like... What about the grocery store? He says, shut up. He says, if you say anything, I'm going to put you in jail right now. You're back talking to me. So I turned around. I went in the house. Guess what happened? Immediately, as far as I'm aware, it happened immediately. His knees quit working, and he had to retire. And guess what? I didn't have to listen to him because it came from his mouth. It wasn't on the restraining order or protection order or any of this that they issued because after my ex-wife's kids were molested, uh, by this guy out of town. He was a pastor's kid. After the children were molested, um, they, and they took them away, they put an order against us, like we had done it. And they never accused me of anything. They never brought any charges against me. Uh, they brought them against my ex-wife, but they didn't do anything against the guy who actually did it. In fact, they gave him one of the children. And it was a terrible, I mean, you, the situation was absolutely terrible. And so this deputy was struck down, and we didn't have to listen to him. I mean, it's it's crazy. So that happened before the prophecy started happening. Then, after those major disasters, Obama refused to help them. That was the fourth oh, prophecy. Yeah. Prophecy number four, Obama refused to help them in the days of their destruction. So you got Washington State's a liberal state with a liberal governor named Jay Inslee. I believe he's still the governor. He calls out to the federal government, Obama, for help. Says, state of three states of disaster, largest fire ever, flood, massive power outage, and winter storm, three states of emergency, Obama says, no, 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 I will not help you. That was the fourth prophecy I gave, no help for them in the day of the disaster from the people they labored with from their youth. Why did Washington State labor with the federal government from their youth? That's where they came from. Uh, the, according to historians, Washington State was never founded by the people. Uh, Washington State became a territory uh, there was a constitution created for the state. The people voted on it. Then it was destroyed. The, you, can, you can still get copies of it, though, that was preserved. But they tried to destroy it. They wrote another constitution the people did not vote on. Washington State has two constitutions. Okay, you can, you can see all this. They took it to the federal government. The federal government says you're a state. The people didn't say. They didn't vote on it. The federal government. So the people they labored with from their youth, that's the federal government. They refused to help them in the day of the disasters. It comes out of Isaiah. That's what I was reading when I was prophesying. So then uh, the next two prophecies. So the next prophecy was um, against the, the guy that came over here and, and threatened us that someone was going to die from drugs. And then he did within uh, 24 hours. He was dead because um, I warned the deputy and I said, you got to arrest, do, arrest these people. Do something about the drugs. Or someone's going to die. He was dead. Then the deputy was fired because he didn't do anything about it. Because they, they had to fire somebody because somebody died. Because um, the public was outraged. So then came prophecy number six. I was called into court. I was called into court because they were scared. That's what they said. They told me they were terrified of these prophecies. And they said if I prophesied again that I was going to be put in prison. They said I'd be put in prison and felony charges would be brought against me. That's what the judge said. So uh, I had spoke, I had emailed the prosecutors, the prosecuting attorney previous to this, although I'm not sure what happened to that email. I don't think I have a copy of it anymore. I have to go look. And I told him, I said, I had a dream about this judge. 
I said, I had dreamed that the judge was going to lose his position and he was going to get drunk and try to kill himself. And I said, if he loses his position, you need to make sure that he doesn't get drunk and try to kill himself. Somebody needs to watch him. And so when the judge summoned me to court, or the state yeah, summoned me, and he threatened me and told me he's going to put me in prison or bring federal charges against me, do both, sorry, both, if I kept prophesying against the state, then I said, uh, I said, I shrugged my shoulders and says, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because I'd given the seventh prophecy. I'd already given the seventh prophecy that I'm repeating today in this video. So, so I told the judge, I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. He shook in his chair. I didn't understand this, why he was so scared. He shook in his chair after he told me he was terrified and all this. And a little while after that, he was removed from office. That was it. I, I told him that I wasn't going to be speaking for Yahweh anymore to them. And he was removed from office. And that was it. So um, that was actually the sixth prophecy. But not only was he removed, but Judge Scott Galena uh, was removed from office. You'll have to talk to you about that fear because I've seen it in other people. Um, but Judge Scott Galena was removed from office uh, for rape. He was the Superior Court judge because in Washington State here we have a county district judge and then we have was a state judge and then we have a Superior Court judge in the same courthouse in this county. And... So the Superior Court judge, I brought an appeal before him, prophesied there, talked yeah, to him in fine. my appeal, and asked them to set me free. And I, I put a picture of a sword in there because he had a sword above his head. Nope. Uh, the judgment of Yahweh was right above his head. And so he denied me, and then he was arrested in a Soton County because he was also the judge of a Soton County. You can look it up online. Uh, for they, they said he second-degree rape and a bunch of sexual charges. Well... He just pled guilty in April of this year, finally, um, and they reduced his charges, I think, and he's supposed to get, I don't know how many years in prison or whatever for that. So that was the sixth, the sixth prophecy it had to do with the other judge in the lower court, but it also, the upper court judge was also removed from office as well. And so these are the things that happened. And the reason I believe the seventh prophecy is going to happen with the Syrians and the attack and the invaders, I've seen it in dreams, um, and other people have seen it in dreams. Even even people that don't believe in just following the Bible have seen this in dreams and told me about it, and they didn't know what they were seeing. Um, and I explained it to them. They didn't want to believe it because they like Syrian people. They like Islamic people, and, and they're telling me, no, no, Justin, that can't be it. I'm like, that's exactly what you saw. I said, they so, came in here, started raping people, doing all this stuff. I said, that's what you saw. Sure yeah, but I think it was something yeah. in their dream had to do with frogs falling yeah, from the sky. And other there was other things going on. Um, I don't know, but I've seen it. And, uh, and, and, and I just keep reading about it. Every time that I think these people have repented, they've done something. You know, maybe they've done something small to try to repent and do something right. And I think maybe the judgment isn't going to come. Boom. I keep getting these scriptures about the judgment coming. It keeps coming to my attention over and over and over again. And I go back to these six prophecies have already happened. The seventh one was given to me then. I keep being told it's going to happen. I can't deny it. I can't say it's not going to happen. They would have to repent. They would have to do everything that Yahweh said. And based upon their behavior in the entire state of Washington and everything I've seen, I have no confidence that that's going to happen. Also, uh, the state of Washington statistics say that this city I'm in is the most holy city in the state. It's the most Christian city in the state as far as per capita people going to church and whatever. So I don't I don't really see that happening. I was so hopeful in the beginning. I was. I was so hopeful that they would do what they were supposed to and they'd follow the law and this would become a sanctuary city for believers and it'd become a model for the whole state. But And maybe in the future someday it will. I, I don't know. Maybe after destruction and everything, maybe it will. But um, but that's my prophecy. So I'm going to go ahead and give a salvation prayer. You might hear my grandmother in the background. Uh, she, she's been diagnosed with dementia and two strokes. You might hear her talking in the background. But I'm going to end this video with a prayer. And thank you guys for watching. And hopefully somebody can help that person asking for cash, sending me the email. Uh, whatever you know if they actually have a need if they're not a scammer or whatever hopefully they can help them i don't know um it's it's really hard to tell i get those requests all the time for cash 
And the people I help are the people I know. If I know people and I know they really have a problem and they're not trying to scam me and I know what they need um, and I'm able and Yahweh empowers me and I'm able to help them out, I actually have the ability to do it. And he, you know, then, then I do it if I can. So anyway, no matter how little you get, you can help somebody else. And, and that's important. Um, contrary to what they told me, you don't have to join in. You don't have to give money to a missionary. You don't have to do that. You know, I, I mean, I could get on here and say, I need finances too. I could do that, but I'm not going to, um, at least not today. So anyway, um, Let's go ahead and pray. And uh, somebody gave someone ten dollars. Thank. You. I think Sheila gave me ten dollars. I'm too inexperienced. <laughs> Thanks for ten dollars. I'm too inexperienced to know how this YouTube thing works with getting money, even though I've been on here since like 2016. So, but thank you for a ten dollar donation. That's great. If that's what happened, I'm not sure. It looks like that's what happened. Because I see a big yellow thing and someone jumping up and down on the screen. So. Um, Praise Yahweh for that. But I want to say a prayer. Um, I don't know what else I was talking about. So I'm going to do a salvation prayer. And we'll end the video. So anyways. Um, thank you. Uh, pray. Okay let's let's just do do a prayer. But thank you and praise you Yahweh. And Shema Sheikh's my name. For salvation. For sending your son. We confess you are Yahweh. You are Elohim. You're the Elohim of. We can't say Elohims. You're the El of Elohims. You're the El of Elohim. That's the right way to say it. And I thank you and praise you. You sent your son to die for us on the cross. I confess you are Lord. I confess I have sinned against you. And I thank you and praise you and ask you for forgiveness of sins One, two, and for righteousness three, and for all good things. I thank you that as a good father, you train us up in the way we should go and lead us into following every word that proceeds in the mouth of Yahweh. And for salvation, for baptism, for communion, for your Holy Spirit, for your Rukadesh, for all good things. And um, I just thank you that you're with us, you're for us, and you're not against us. And um, I, I thank you for your protection, for your leadership. I thank you for telling us, for showing us your word, for showing us that we need to follow it and do it and keep it and establish it. And I thank you for the people that are watching and that we're making a difference and we're spreading a message and we have a testimony to give. And I thank you for this house and, and for all the good things we have. I pray that everyone everywhere will receive your word and come back to you and follow you with their whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I thank you that we get to live with you in heaven and be with you forever and ever and receive all good things um, by, by doing what you tell us to do because of your salvation, your goodness, your righteousness, and not ours. I thank you for that, that we'd be good servants and not wicked servants. I pray for the wicked that they would turn back to you and follow you with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. I, I thank you that you will put an end to them if they won't turn back to you, but I pray they would. And I thank you that you set us free. You set us free from the government. You set us free from the ways of the world, the laws and traditions of men. Um, that you, you yourself do it and, and give us righteousness. You protect us. You protect us from the threats of the judges and all these people. Because you're amazing and you're holy. You're our provider. You're El Shaddai. You are the highest. The highest of the highest. And we thank you. And Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name. Above me, I can ask, name, imagine. And we thank you. Uh, I'll pray. I ask for prayer also for uh, the website and the videos and everything. I ask other people to pray. It's a prayer request. Uh, I'll pray for you guys. But I pray that you, you guys help out prayer for the for the YouTube channel and everything that um, I'm trying to bring to you. That Yahweh will make it right. That it will only speak the words He has for us to say. And we'll know the truth and be set free and, and tell the truth um, in everything that we say and do. And... I pray for all of you you receive the same, that in your ministries, your health, your business, yeah, all good things, yeah. that Yahweh will bless you and lead you into whatever you're supposed to do, into righteousness, and uh, and that we just do everything that He wants us to do. And I thank you, Yahweh, in Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name, for every way you speak to us, through your word, through your will, your way, through spirit and truth, uh, dreams, signs, visions, miracles, wonders, and all good things, every way you speak to us, through other people. And I just thank you for all these things. So, uh, Yahweh, our Av, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alright, well, thanks so much for watching the video, and I pray you're blessed, and I thank... 
um, the lady that gave me ten dollars as well and yes good night it's getting late I gotta get my grandma her medicine or dinner and I had to wait till 10 to give her medicine because I had to space it out but anyways all right bless you Shalom and uh, I hope uh, you guys have a great Shabbat Shalom this week and every week. In Shem Sheikh's my name. Amen. Love me, I can ask, think, imagine. All right.